The Snake on Silver screen, we take a look at Beta Club. The role of athletic trainers. And military options after high school. Good afternoon, Dutch Fort. Today is Friday, March 27th. And your Silver Screen report starts now. Are you excited to graduate in three months? Yeah, I am. And my fellow seniors and I took the next step towards June 4th. We picked up our graduation supplies last Friday. Josh M. Holt was there. Graduation bags invaded Dutch Fork last Friday as seniors picked up their graduation supplies. I taught school for 42 years and I taught in high school. And I worked with young people who spent 12 years of their lives reaching this particular milestone in their lives. It's very exciting for me to graduate. It's just that next step of knowing that I'm done, almost done being in high school. Although picking up graduation supplies may seem like a small endeavor, it brings about many emotions. When you are 18 years old and you have reached that first milestone in your life, number one, you know that you can reach goals that you've tried to attain, and number two, you know that you can probably set more goals and reach those in the future. It just, it makes it feel more real because you have the cap and the gown and you're just like, wow, this is really happening. <laughs> it's ready to start a new chapter in my life. It's something that you start when you're in kindergarten, you see kids graduate in kindergarten, and you're like, I want to do that one day. And it's finally happening the first week of June. For underclassmen, seniors offer advice to get you to graduation. For freshmen, uh, get prepared. It is hard. You're going to get through it, believe me. Uh, junior year for rising uh, juniors is going to be hard. That's the hardest year, I think, of high school. Um, just stick to the books and everything will just be fine. It'll all work out in the end and one day you'll be getting ready to do this just like I am today. If you miss pickup day, you can pick up your supplies on April 13th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. This will be your last chance to pick up your supplies. This has been Josh M. Holt with your Silver Screen Report. As you may have noticed, Beta Club has been collecting donations all week. Yeah, I've been wondering about that. What's it for? You're in luck, Ariana, because Daniel Hudson has the story. The gentle clink of coins makes into the noise of the cafeteria as donation collectors walk around to see if anybody is willing to contribute to the Children's Miracle Network Fund. We're raising money for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, of which we have multiple in South Carolina, the two biggest being Palmetto Richland right here in Columbia, and then Greenville Hospital Systems in Greenville. Because of Miss South Carolina, we raise money for those hospitals around South Carolina. It's a good way for people in Beta Club to get involved and help people in our area. It was just a good cause to help out with, you know, um, helping with the children and helping off the medical bills. I understand that's a very difficult thing to do, and, um, you know, any way I can help out is, is pretty good. The fundraiser is backed by Beta Club, and all proceeds go directly to people who need help paying their medical bills. I think that donating to the Children's Miracle Network is extremely important because a lot of times, um, you know, kids are diagnosed suddenly and their parents are faced with having to come up with money to pay for medical bills um, out of pocket. And if we donate to Children's Miracle Network, that helps cover the cost for um, these people who are not only facing, you know, potential ill health of their children, but also, you know, how are they going to afford their bills at home? And so it kind of alleviates um, some of the pressure on them to be able to take care of all of those life situations. Although not everyone is able to donate, any and every amount is accepted, because no matter how small it may be, each donation helps. I think it's important just because, like, say, like, I've donated before to, like, other causes and stuff, and I, like, I feel like my day is better if I donate, and I feel like a better person almost. I think that we should donate to the Children's Miracle Network because every little penny helps um, and you know hopefully it won't affect anyone one day but you never know because we can't tell the future. This has been Daniel Hudson for your Silver Screen Report. Adults always tell us how important it is to think before we speak. But we should also think before we tweet. Here's a look at our teachers reading mean tweets from their students. Miss Medlock, you are not a vegan. Stop that nonsense. Fries are vegan. Stop that nonsense. Hey, Mr. Pollock, maybe I'll get to school on time when you give me a better parking spot. How about no parking spot at all, Joker, whoever you are? Miss Turner is out to get me. <laughs> That's so not true. <laughs> Gilliam just got salty because I said Landy was my favorite teacher. 
Ha 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 ha. Sorry, Mr. Gilliam. I swear, Mr. Gilliam wants me to dislike him. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> Saw Mr. English at the museum today. He asked where my ID was. Well, I mean, if you're in a museum, you should be wearing IDs. Just got the urge to knock Mr. Barron's coffee out of his hand in the hallway out of pure rage. A push is quite stressful. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students why it's important for them to filter what they post on social media. It's important to filter what you say on social media because you can never erase it and it's on social media forever and you can't see some people's reactions and it really could hurt someone over a long-term effect. Because it can be taken out of context. Looking for a job, the uh, hiring manager, they could go and find your social media. They may not like what they see and that could cost you a job. I mean, you gotta watch a lot of things, like uh, especially relationship statuses for one. You don't want your side girls finding out about each other. The SAT word of the week is circumspect, an adjective meaning cautious. Speaking of being responsible, respectful, and reputable, the PBIS All-Star Party for the third nine weeks was Tuesday. Students were given an option of a popsicle or ice cream as a reward for displaying the three R's. Recruiters from the military came to Dutch Fort to recruit juniors and seniors. Link Brazil has more. On Monday and Tuesday, recruiters from the Army, Navy, and Air Force came to Dutch Fork to recruit and inform students on the opportunities that the military offers. The reason I'm coming to Dutch Fork is to spread Navy awareness to the up-and-coming juniors and seniors, to talk about their plans for success in the future, and the opportunities that the Navy has to offer that they, not, they might not be aware of. I was walking in the hallway, and um, he pulled me to the side, and he said, have you ever thought about joining the military? And I said, well, I've considered it. And he said, um, do you have a certain career aspect that you're looking at? And I said, well, I'm looking at being a fireman. And he said, well, we offer that. And he had me fill out a piece of paper and tell him my career choices. And um, he said he would get back to me in about two or three days to see if there was any options available. I mean, they give you good, good information about the branches that they talk about and your benefits and what you have to do, the requirements and all the PT scores and your ASVAP scores and all that. They let you know anything that you need to know to join their force. There's a variety of students at Dutch Fork who have chosen to join the military after high school. I'm currently enlisted in the Air Force Reserve. I leave June 16th off the basic. Uh, right now, the plan is for me to join the Army. They've offered me a um, full ride with a $20,000 signing bonus with um, two years of uh, payback time after I get out of college. Yeah. Well, I've thought about joining the military. Um, I've looked into the Air Force and then the Navy. According to the recruiters, the military recruitment process is simple and gets you prepared for the rent you choose. Ultimately, we're just going to come sit down and speak with uh, the students and counselors about, you know, who's interested in the military. Hopefully, have a sit down with them, see where they're going with their future, make sure they're making the right steps depending on whether or not they, if they want to join the military or go to college. It was fine, I guess, because I knew, you know, kind of the deal that was going down. I know that I'm getting a really good deal, and I'm kind of excited that I'm getting my college paid for. Students that are joining the military are excited for what the military has to offer. The military itself can help you in a long way, because if you have put military on a resume, that's going to set you apart from the people that go to college and all this, and it separates you from the regular civilians. I feel like it's awesome. It's a really good idea. It's a great chance to get, you know, your college paid for, get some discipline in your life, and really set up a bright future for yourself. This has been Malik Brazil with your Silver Swim Report. March is National Athletic Trainers Month. Jamie Gilbert Fitzpatrick took a closer look at the help the trainers provide to the athletes. Dutch Fork offers sports medicine one, two, and three for students interested in an athletic training career. They, they help prepare uh, for practice. They get the kids taped. Uh, and then when we're on the field, uh, they're there uh, to help to make sure that they're staying hydrated, that they're doing the things they're supposed to do. Make sure we have proper hydration. Uh, make sure we stretch out wearing the right equipment and keep our bodies healthy and safe on the field. We rehab, like rehabilitate the um, athlete within like ice, exercises. Um, we prepare for the sports like with the water. We try to do prevention. Students in sports medicine are able to have hands-on experience with athletes which helps them decide what they want to do in the future. This allows them to uh, get some hands-on experience to get a good fundamental uh, 
amount of education uh, in medicine and then really helps them decide where they want to go. Yeah. This program has helped direct me towards the medical field because without it I probably wouldn't have been very interested. It's definitely changed my life um, a lot. Um, before my freshman year I actually was introduced to this program and I fell in love with it and it's actually something I want to do in college. Trainers help the athletes stay safe on and off the field, but improving sports safety and knowing the proper fundamentals of the sport can also help them keep them safe. The, the best way to be safe is to learn proper fundamentals. Keep what you're tackling heads up all the time, see what you're hitting. Um, if you put your head down, you get hit on top of the head and your neck's gone. Um, that's, that injury that Jack had was uh, very tragic and we hate to see that happen to athletes. Just continue to keep doing what they're doing, making sure that we're doing the right things and making sure our, like our padding and everything is up to date. Athletic trainers help athletes perform to the best of their abilities. Without athletic trainers, it'd be really hard for sports to like stay going because of how many injuries that we do see. Most trainers don't get the spotlight that they need. They think they just give us water and that's it. They actually care about us. They want us to be able to perform at our maximum levels. The sports medicine department encourages students who are interested in the medical field or becoming an athletic trainer to sign up for one of the sports medicine courses or join staff as an athletic training student aide. This has been Jamie Gilbert Fitzpatrick with your Silver Screw Report. And now for some announcements. Congratulations to the girls track team for placing second in the Silver Fox Invitational. Injured Chapin lacrosse player Jack Enright's GoFundMe page is still open. Please help support him and his family. There will also be a 5K to raise money for Jack on May 30th at Chapin High School. Follow Jack's 5K on Twitter for more info. Now here's Sam with more. Thanks, Ariana. Senior Field Day will be held on April the 10th at the football stadium from 8.15 to 1 o'clock. Prom tickets are available in the Commons. Tickets are $25 for singles and $50 for couples. Thanks for watching. We'll see you after spring break. Make <laughs> and all the help the train recruit juniors and seniors. Malik Brazil joins the army. <laughs> Would you knock it off? Yeet. Okay. You should comment. LOL. This is that. Yeah. Wait, no, I'm crying. Sit up straight and smile. I was. Great. Let's do it. Come on. I'm I gotta go.